Well, both of these are responding to Dame Judith Hackett's uh, Building a Safer Future report. So the Building Safety Bill relates to new and existing buildings in scope, residential buildings over 18 metres in height or six storeys, whichever is reached first. Uh, the bill uh, provides a narrative to widen the scope of what constitutes an in-scope or high-risk building, which is why there are elements of the bill that apply to all buildings. The regulatory framework introduces the three gateways to compliance, so gateway one for pre-planning, gateway two pre-construction, and gateway three for pre-occupation. The gateways are there to ensure that the design, construction, and operation of the building meets with the functional requirements of the building regulations and specifically targets the fire and structural risks. The accountable person is to apply for a building registration certificate for all in-scope buildings before the building can be legally occupied. This is to be supported by the building safety case report. Registration occurs every five years and requires the golden thread of information to be available at these times. The Fire Safety Bill, on the other hand, seeks to address the more immediate issue of external walls and lays the foundations for further secondary legislation to pick up the extra measures. It is the government's fast track route to enable a more immediate change in the industry before the more complex regulatory reform Building Safety Bill comes to pass. The Fire Safety Bill amends the Regulatory Reform Fire Safety Order 2005 and now widens that scope for the responsible person. The bill clarifies that multi-occupied residential buildings of any height with two or more dwellings is to include a risk assessment on the external wall as well as balconies and attachments and requires checks on all flat entrance fire doors opening into communal areas. The fire safety bill will look to complement the building safety bill and its safety cases which will be required for all multi-occupied buildings over 18 metres. So the implications for the building owner are wide ranging and far reaching, particularly if they own buildings over 18 metres for which additional requirements need to be met around the golden thread and building safety cases, which are to be compiled and maintained and submitted for verification and validation every five years. Managing buildings now will be more complex, more costly, and will require a significant amount of resident engagement, as well as building up a trust between a landlord and its tenants which has seen a significant decline over a number of years. For social housing landlords, the Charter for Social Housing White Paper has just been published, which pushes the Safer Homes narrative further and requires the social housing regulator to be more effective in its checks of landlords. It provides the foundation of resident engagement and for them not to be treated as second-class citizens. The bills will undoubtedly require a significant cultural shift for the entire built environment. Competence has been a significant focus in the drive for clarity, consistency and quality. Procurement of frameworks and construction contracts will be scrutinised, with a race to the bottom approach being frowned upon. Defining what is quality and best value and what best value is, and how this will sit in the zero carbon agenda moving forward, will require a greater understanding of the assets building owners have. This through good quality asset data in the order for them to be able to maintain their buildings, to be safe, and also to plot a course on how they can be carbon efficient.